Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah. Thank you so much for joining today's class. Uh, today's class is focusing on a Thanksgiving topper for cupcakes. And um, I want to see where you guys are tuning in from. And I'm wondering if you guys are new to working with fondant, if you've um, ever worked with it before. And then we'll go over the supplies so we can go to the overhead camera. And so first, I want to go over what fondant we're using. I have white fondant, pink fondant, and red fondant. I have the satinized edible glue, the satinized food color marker. I'm using black today. So Michael sells a, um, a two pack of the black markers, one in the fine tip and one in the bowls. So you can get them there. Or there's also different box sets. So there's fine tip, bowl tip neon and all of those, but there is black in those as well. Um, I have a pair of scissors because this is going to be used to open up the fondant packets. I have a paintbrush to apply the edible glue to the fondant. And I have a small knife. I have a spatula in case um, for spreading buttercream. And I have a range of different cutters. Um, I believe that this round one is about two and a half inches. And then we have a small uh, heart cutter as well as a really small circle cutter and a square cutter. I'm working on a silicone mat. This is helpful when working with fondant because it just allows to you to have a nice surface that the fondant won't stick to. I have buttercream using the satin ice ready to use buttercream. We'll, we'll go over this more once we get to the buttercream part. I have cupcakes and I have cornstarch and a rolling pin. So the cornstarch is used um, inter interchangeable with powdered sugar if you don't have cornstarch, but this is used to help the fondant from sticking to your surface, to your hands, because sometimes if your hands are warm, it might start to stick to your hands and then you can just dust a small amount of powdered, uh, powdered sugar or cornstarch on your hands or your surface. But you don't want to spread too much because that can cause the fondant to get dry if you're needing too much of that into the product. So here's the cute cupcakes that we're going to make. This is a little love letter, a little rose, and a heart with rosettes on top. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to cut out the fondant discs. So this is like the base. This is the white part. Um, and because I want these to kind of set up and dry a little bit before we can start writing on them with the marker. And I'm going to show you two ways we can do this because you can make a pre, you can pre-make a disc like this, or you don't have to wait. You can actually put the fondant directly on the cupcake too, if you wanted to. So I'll show you both ways. So first I'm just going to clear my space and I'm going to get the white fondant out. And for those of you who are new to fondant, I like to describe it as basically a rollable frosting. It tastes delicious, just like frosting. Um, and it's very easy to work with. I know it can like seem very scary because you see these amazing cakes that these talented artists make, but I promise you, it's a lot of fun to work with. Um, think of it as like an edible Play-Doh. So first I'm just taking out my white from the package. And to help you understand fondant with drying out, I like to say that once it's exposed to air, it's kind of already starting to dry out. So especially when you're not manipulating it with your hands. So that's why some people might experience tearing or cracking. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to knead the fondant and kneading the fondant is going to help soften it up activate the gums to make sure that it could be pliable so you can create different shapes and roll it out easily without it tearing or cracking. So what I'm doing is I'm just using the palm of my hand and I'm pressing down and then I'll lightly fold, press down, so on. And you're just gonna do this just until you feel like your fondant is becoming stretchier and more pliable. And you might feel like this, it. Uh, gets kneaded but well pretty soon if your hands are on the warmer side, like my hands are always on the warmer side. So it doesn't take me much to uh, get my fondant ready to go. 
Okay. So my other tip for fondant, since we are going to be rolling out discs of fondant, normally when you do that, you like your disc to dry so that you can easily pick it up and then place it onto your cupcake. So a lot of people actually pre-make these if they have an order or if they're doing something for a party, they can pre-make these shaped discs and let them dry and out in the air and then they're ready to go. Um, what I like to do is I like to, if I'm using, if I'm making a lot, I would use a larger tray, but I'm using like a small little tray here and parchment paper. And I like to, after I cut out my shape of fondant, if I want it to dry and stay that shape, I pick it up and I place it down onto the tray that's covered with parchment paper. This way it can start its drying process. I'm not gonna manipulate it anymore because after it's setting for even a few minutes, if you try to manipulate it, you'll notice that it's gonna get cracky or not look as smooth on the surface. So I, it's best to, after you cut your piece of fondant to let it set, unless you're gonna manipulate it again. Um, so I'm gonna show you two ways that we can use this um, disc, this fondant disc. You can either do it so that you pick it up and place it on later, or we can put it directly onto the cupcake now. So my fondant is definitely pliable. So now I'm just going to dust a small amount of cornstarch on my surface. If you put too much, you can always just wipe it away. And then I like to kind of pat down my fondant just to make sure that there's no air bubbles when I start to roll out. Okay, so I'm going to roll the fondant out about like an eighth of an inch thick. And then we're gonna cut out our circles. So for today's designs, we only need three. So I'm just going to cut out three and I'll show you what I'm talking about, how I lift it up right away. So what I like to do is once I have my circles cut out, I like to lift it up place it down on a tray. This way it remains nice and flat. And then it could, it could dry here the whole time. So those are the fondant discs, but I wanna show you another way that you can put these on the cupcake if you don't have time to let them set up so that you can pick them up and um, not bend them around. So another way is you can place it directly onto the cupcake. And what you can do is take buttercream, put a small amount on there, take a spatula, just spread a really thin amount so that it coats the cupcake so that the fondant has something to stick to. Just like that. And then we're gonna roll this out again. And I'm going to cut the circle out. You wanna make sure that the circle cutter is about the same size as, the, as your cupcake. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to place this directly on top and use the, my finger to smooth it out. So you can either use this as your base directly onto the cupcake like this, or you can create discs in advance so that you can end up being able to pick it up and then place it onto your cupcake like I did with these. Okay, so the reason why I wanted to start these off and get this part done is because we're going to be writing on these. Like I wrote little love messages on them, like I love you or love and XOXO. And I like to let the fondant set up a little bit before doing that because I don't want the edible marker to dig into the fondant. And you you wanna be very light-handed when you write as well. This way it doesn't dig into the fondant. So let's do the little rosette design first. 
So we're going to need our red fondant, red or pink fondant, whichever you like. Um, since I have a red one here, I might do one with pink. And also with any of your leftover fondant, it's very important that you put it in an airtight container or as, in a Ziploc bag. So I like to put it in a Ziploc bag, make sure all the air is out and then put it into an airtight container. This way it doesn't dry out. If you buy the fondant tubs, like the buttercream comes in, it's fine if you just place it back into the tub, airtight container, make sure it's completely closed, it won't dry out. So I'm just gonna place the white to the side for now. And I'm going to use my pink and we're gonna create a little rosette. And I'll show you ways that you can do this without using any cutters too. Cause I know sometimes people don't always have all of the different sizes for cutters. So we're just gonna take a portion of the pink out. We don't need much because this is a very small rose. And this technique of the rose, you can always make it bigger if you have to put it on top of the cake or um, you can also use gum paste for this as well. But since this is a small topper, I, the fondant works fine. So my excess pink that I'm not using, I'm putting inside of a bag, to make sure that it doesn't get dried out that to the side and I'm just going to begin kneading the pink. So the nice thing about satinized fondant is that it comes in a really wide variety of colors and they're pre-colored so that you don't have to spend time putting a lot of food color into the product. Um, and they, it comes in so many vibrant colors like pink, blue, red, yellow, green, anything you can think of really. So it takes the hard part out for you. Sarah, you have one question. Okay. Michaela asked, where should you store it once it's in an airtight container? Um, I would store it in a room temperature area. And yes, if you guys have any questions along the way, just put them in the chat. Okay, so my pink fondant is needed. So, what I like to do for my roses, so many people have different techniques for roses. Um, I'm going to first kind of create a cone base so that I can wrap the petals around. So how I'm gonna do that is, since we're working with a smaller scale of a rose, this is how small it is. I'm just taking a small amount of the fondant and I'm gonna roll it into a ball. And then I'm gonna form it into a cone shape. And to do that, I'm just gonna take my two pointer fingers and I'm just gonna lightly start kind of like uh, rolling back and forth to then create a cone shape. And this is just gonna be like our base that we can start with so that we can start wrapping the petals around it to create the rosette. I think I just saw a question come up. Yes. Um, Catherine asked, can you purchase white fondant and then add gel colors as needed? Yes, yes. Tons of people do that because some people like to create their own custom colors. So that's definitely okay to do. Just make sure you, that you do use gel food color because if you use a liquid food color, you're going to um, mess up the consistency. But if you don't have the colored fondant, white is fine and adding gel color will work great. Okay. So now that I have my cone, I'm going to show you two different ways here. I'm going to roll it out and I'm gonna cut out some circles, but I'll show you how to just get a circle if you don't have a small circle cutter as well. For this part, you want your fondant to be on the thinner side so that your petals look a little delicate. And I'm just dusting my surface with some more cornstarch. I'm noticing mine's sticking a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut out a few circles. These are going to be our petals. We're not gonna need too many since our rose is small. So now here's how you can make a circle if you don't have a uh, circle cutter, a small circle cutter. So since petals are not 
super perfect. Like it, if I'm not going to use it the way it is perfectly cut circle like this, I'm actually going to like crimp the edges a little bit with my fingers just to give it like more of a lifelike look and thin out the edges a little bit. So using the cutter will just get you your circles faster, but I'm still going to manip manipulate them a little bit. So if you don't have the cutter, what you can do is you can roll a ball, a small ball of fondant, make sure you've got some cornstarch on your hands just so that it doesn't stick. And then you can just use your pointer finger and press down onto your surface and you'll create a petal just like that. And like I said, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle because the flower petals look better when they're a little bit um, wavy and disheveled looking. So I'm actually going to purposely do that to all of my petals right now. So I'm just going to pick them up and I'm just pinching the edges lightly. Careful not to like tear the fondant. And you're, you wanna do this right after you cut your petals. You don't wanna let them sit for a long time before doing this, because like I said, the fondant begins to set as it's exposed to air. So some people, as they're working, they'll even put like a piece of um, plastic wrap over the pieces so that they don't have to work super fast and be stressed out. Um, if you're working with a lot at a time, you could do that. So I'm just lightly pinching around the edges to thin them out, to give them some movement. Like these actually look like little rose petals. And then um, this method is nice too, because as you go around the rows, you'll know, you'll feel like you have to have a little bit of bigger petals. So this kind of stretches them out a little bit as well. So for the very beginning of the rows, we want to start out with like a small little rosette. So I'm actually going to custom make a small petal, just like I showed you before. So I'm just going to take a small amount of fondant. I'm going to just press it on my mat to get it nice and flat like a circle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, if, you're, if your hands are warm and you're working with your fondant, you might not feel like you have to use any edible glue. Also, if you don't have edible glue, you can use a little bit of water that will help as an adhesive. You don't want to use too much of the edible glue or the water because the colors can bleed and it will just get messy. You really only need the smallest amount. So I currently probably don't need anything because my hands are on the warmer side, but I'm going to take this small little petal that I made and I'm going to just kind of wrap it along making a cone shape so that I can start the center of my rose. So that's kind of my base. And now I'm going to start going around with the little petals that I made. And for this part, I might need to use the edible glue. So what I'm going to do is on my mat here up in the corner where I'm not rolling anything, I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out. So I have it on my surface and I have a skinny paintbrush and I'm just going to lightly just kind of place some edible glue around the cone so that when I wrap the petals, they stick, but I'm really only using the smallest amount. So I'm going to take some petals that are on the smaller side and I'm going to literally just place the, take the rose petals like um, perpendicular and just kind of wrap it around the cone. So then my next petal is going to go directly across from it on the other side and kind of wrap over the other one. Just like that. And then you can manipulate the petals a little bit to like bend them, make them look more lifelike. So then as I'm going around the rows, I'm gonna have to add a little bit more edible glue. So I'm just gonna do a little dab, put some on the petals here and there. So anywhere where there's the crease where the petals overlap, that's where you're going to wanna cover with your next one. So that's where mine overlaps. So I'm gonna take another petal and I'm going to place it directly over that. And I'm leaving the top kind of flapping over cause that's the top of the petal. So next I'm going to take another one and now this petal is gonna go right across from it and they're gonna overlap each other. 
And I'm just lightly folding back the petals a little bit just to give them some movement. So I'm just gonna add probably a few more petals. We don't wanna make it too big since it's going on a small cupcake. But again, I'm gonna take the edible glue. I'm going to just put a little bit along these petals and I'm going to add another petal on my crease where the two petals overlap before. So now for the next one, I'm going to do it right across. And then you have yourself a little rose and you can keep doing this and it can get fuller and fuller. But like I said, since we're doing this for a cupcake topper, I'm probably gonna stop at how it is now. And you'll notice the more you add and the more you handle the rose, you're gonna get kind of like a tail, like it's gonna be long under here. So all you have to do is just rip off the base a little bit. And then you'll be able to sit it flat on top of your, your white cupcake topper disc. Okay, so we have our rose complete. So now I'm going to place this to the side with my discs, because I'm not ready to write on the fondant yet. So I'm gonna just place that to the side. And any leftover scraps, you can also wrap up and place it in a bag. And then we're going to move on to the next design. I think we are going to do, we could do the little love letter. So, I guess I'll work with pink this whole time since I already did these in red, but like I said, you can use really any color that you want. Um, you can even mix the white with the pink to create a pastel pink. That would be very pretty. Um, so what I'm going to do is we want to create the letter, which is really just a rectangle. So I'm going to show you two ways you can get this rectangle with a cutter and then um, if you don't have a square cutter or rectangle cutter, we'll show you how to do that with just a circle cutter. So first, you want to roll out your fondant. You don't want it too thin because you kind of want to have like the letter to have some dimension. So this is about the thickness of my fondant. And I have a square cutter. It's about an inch and a half. So I'm just going to cut the square. And then to turn it into a rectangle, I'll just kind of, I can actually use my square cutter again and then to cut off the excess so it's a nice straight line to create a rectangle. So you could do it that way or you can roll out your fondant. and just cut out your own rectangle. So you can cut straight edges. Straight edges. And then cut a rectangle. So if you don't have cutters, it's okay. You can always do things with just your knife or your hands, which is great. Okay, so now that we have our rectangle, the next part is making the lines on it with the edible marker, which we're going to do carefully because the fondant isn't completely set or anything like that. So we don't wanna dig the marker into it. So we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna create that really, really, really tiny heart, which is really adorable. And you're not gonna use any cutter for that either. So first, and the heart, I think I did in white there. So you can do the heart in another color so that it stands out, out a little bit. Um. I am getting some pink residue on my hands. So I have wet paper towels here to wipe my hands because I don't have direct access to a sink right now. But you definitely, in between working with colors, especially darker ones with lighter ones, you want to make sure that your hands are nice and clean and dry. Okay. 
So I already have white fondant that's needed from earlier. So I'm just going to take that out of the bag. I'm just gonna take the tiniest amount. We really don't need a lot for this part. This is the size of fondant I took out. I'm not even gonna use all of that. So to make the heart, I'm gonna show you in a larger scale first, somewhat of a larger scale. So you'll take two small balls of fondant. And just like we did earlier, you wanna kind of create a cone shape. And to do that, you're just gonna lightly roll back and forth on one end of your circle until it creates a little cone shape. So I just did that with the other one. And now to make the heart, we're just putting the two together. And it creates a little heart. So I need to do that in a, like a little bit of a smaller scale for this. Actually, it kind of works like that. It's cute with it a little bigger. So I'm gonna leave that. I can show you how to do it again. So basically you're just taking two small pieces of fondant, forming them into equal size balls as much as you, as close as you can. And then you're going to take your, I like to use my pointer finger and I'm gonna just do it on one end of the circle. I'm going to just lightly roll back and forth on one end to create a cone shape. So I'll do that again with the other one, lightly back and forth to create a cone shape. And I'm just going to now combine these two together, flatten it out a little bit and it creates a heart. Okay, so now for the lines, I'm going to use the edible marker. I love the edible markers. They are one of the best things ever because you don't have to, if you can draw or if you can doodle, then you can use the edible marker. You can do so many different fun designs. This works on fondant that has set, um, gum paste that's set, royal icing that is set, cookie icing that is set. Um, so this is a lot of fun. You can actually do this directly onto your sugar cookie as well. So some people like to draw directly onto their sugar cookie to make a guide for their royal icing. So today, like I said, our fondant isn't completely set right now. So I'm just going to do this gently. Um, so I'm gonna do it with very light pressure. I'm using the black and I'm using the fine tip marker um, just cause I'm, I'm doing skinny lines. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make these lines all around. So first I'm going to outline the left, the bottom, and the right side of the end of the uh, envelope. Don't outline the top, just the right, the, the left, and the bottom. And then we're gonna do a upside down or like a wide V for the top of the envelope. So first I'm just gonna do light pressure and I'm just going to make an outline with the marker along one side, the bottom, and then the other side. Just with light pressure, because if you, if you um, use too much pressure, the tip of the marker is going to dig into the fondant and then that will just, it will make um, indents into the fondant and it could possibly mess up the marker as well. So you just wanna be really careful. So I just outlined the left, the bottom and the right side. And now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a wide V for the top for the envelope where it folds over. So to do this, to make sure I'm even on both sides, I'm going to, I'm going to start in the middle and just kind of make the V up to the left and then the V up to the right. Okay. 
my envelopes done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the heart as kind of like the stamp on the letter. So to do that, I'm going to use a very small amount of edible glue. But I love the markers for Valentine's Day, especially because you can just write really cute messages on top of cookies or cupcake toppers. And they act as cute Valentines. So now that the envelope is done, I'm going to also place this on the side with my fondant discs and the other little rows that we made. So the next part is going to be this really cute heart that has many rosettes. I was inspired by those, um, those flowers that you can get in like the boxes that last for a really long time. They're very expensive. So I was in inspired by that. Um, so this is really easy too. All you have to do to make those really tiny rosettes is kind of just roll little swirls of fondant. So first we're gonna cut out our base with a heart cutter and then we'll make the little rosettes. So to do that, we're just going to take some of our fondant, whatever color you like, and you really only need a small amount. I'm going to roll it on the thicker side. This way the base is um, big enough for the rosettes. And I'm just going to cut out a small heart. So another tip when you're cutting fondant with a, a cutter, I like to make sure that I have clean edges. I like to press down and I like to give it a little twist to make sure that all the edges are clean. So like the edges, I mean like this. And if they're not, if your cutter is like on the duller side and it's not cutting clean edges, you could just take your finger and kind of rub along the side and that will smooth out the edges for you. Okay, so now that we have our heart cut out, what we're going to do is we're going to roll out fondant on the thinner side. And we're going to cut just skinny strips of fondant. And doesn't matter how long, because you'll, the longer the strip, the bigger the rows will be, but you can do all different sizes. But basically, we just want to cut out little or make little rosettes to fill in this heart. So they're going to be very small rosettes. This is a very small cutter. This is like a inch and a half, this heart. So first I'm just going to get straight edges on this little piece that I rolled out. And then I'm going to cut really skinny strips of the fondant. They don't have to be perfect because we're going to be rolling these up. So it's okay. So once you have your strips of fondant, all you're going to do is you're going to fold one end in to start. And then you're just gonna roll to make little rosettes. Like that right there is the perfect size. So I'm just gonna cut off, cut that off and then just begin with this same strip of fondant and create more. So I'm going to just cut that off. Place it down here and I'm just going to do it again. So you might need edible glue, you might not. Um, depends if your hands are warm and if your fondant's on like the stickier side. So I'm just lightly folding the fondant in and I'm just rolling it to create a small little swirl. Some of them can be bigger than others. So then if you end up having a tail like this, you it's like it looks like it's long, like a cylinder, just take your small knife give it a cut on the end. So that looks like that. So we're just gonna keep doing this process until we have enough to cover the heart. I think I just found a hack for this. So if your fondant is, um, 
If the fondant strip is wide enough, you can actually cut down the middle and create two rosettes because you get the rolling on both sides. So I just did that with this one. So to speed that up, I'm just going to cut down the middle and then I get two rosettes. And if they get a little like wonky from you cutting, just shape it, just pick it back up and just kind of like make it round again. So just going to roll the fondant to create little rosettes. If it's big enough, I'm going to cut it down the middle to create two at once. And then I'm actually, I'm gonna start putting them onto the heart so that you can see how they're gonna form so that you know what size of rosettes that you need as you go. So I'm going to put a thin coating of glue on this whole heart. And then we can begin sticking the little rosettes on top. So I'm going to choose a smaller one for the center, for the top center where the, so that it has like a point. And you just go around the whole part until it's completely filled. And doing this now is going to help you see what size rosettes that you need to make for the rest of it. So I pretty much just got with five with six of these I just filled like half of the heart so I'm just going to make a few more so just going to again swirl the fondant roll it on top of itself and it creates a little swirled rosette Give it a light tap on top to make sure that it's sticking to the heart. I'm just going to re-roll this again. So I'm making sure that I'm rolling it on the thinner side, not too thin that it's too hard to manipulate, but thin enough so that you don't have like big, thick rosettes. And I'm just using a knife to cut thin strips of fondant. And I don't need much more. Roll them into swirls. And I'm going to cut this down the middle to create two. And if it starts to get missed, like if it starts to get out of shape after you cut it, just use your fingers to kind of pinch it back into a circle. Like this one does not look like a circle right now, but I'm just going to take my fingers and just kind of manipulate it. To be a circle again. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more. So I'm just rolling the fondant. Cutting it in half to get two. And then I'm placing it on the heart. I have room for like one more small one. Another way that you can do this to make a strip of fondant is you can make a small ball of the fondant, roll it out into a log, and then flatten it out with your finger. Uh, 
That's what I love about Fondant is that you really don't have to have a lot of specialty tools. You can do a lot with things that you have around the house already. Um, making sure. Okay, my little rosette heart is done. So now we have our three pieces done that are gonna go on top of these white discs. But before we place them on there, we want to do our writing on the fondant. The fondant's not going to be completely set. If I was doing these myself, um, I would like to let these fondant, like the discs set for a few hours just to be sure that I'm not going to dig into the fondant. Um, and then like, I can actually already start to pick this fondant, this disc up and not have it bend or anything. And then it's only been like 30 minutes since we cut this out. But once I put it on a cupcake with buttercream, it might start to fold on the edges because it's not completely set yet. So I like to, if, when I'm making fondant discs to go on as cupcake toppers, I let them sit out all night to make sure that they're a disc. It's a solid disc, but they're not gonna harden too much that you can't bite into it. It's gonna be more of like a sprinkle consistency. And like I said, if you don't wanna wait for them, you can place the fondant directly on your cupcake with some buttercream underneath as well. And that will be perfect too. So if you were doing that, you would then just lightly write whatever you wanted to write on the cupcake, place your decoration on top. So for these, I'm just going to move these little toppers out of the way. And then for these, this part, I just thought it was, pretty. You don't even have to add that, but I just thought it was really cute. So for the background of these, I did, I wrote XOXO, I love you and love. And I did it kind of in like a script. So I'm just going to lightly with a very light pressure, just begin writing like little messages in the back. You can do whatever message you can, you want. You could do hug me. Um, any of those little heart messages are very cute. So I'm just going to lightly start doing, I'm going to do XOXO. And these markers are so um, saturated anyway that you really don't need to use a lot of pressure. XO, XO. Like I said, you can do whichever message you like. You could even do this in um, a different color edible marker. There's pink, there's red, blue, green. If you make a mistake in writing, I don't know what that said. I think it said, if you make a mistake, something. <laughs> Yeah, if you make a mistake writing, can you wipe it off? You can't. That's the sad part. <laughs> so sometimes when I do this, I actually, if I'm nervous, if I have an order and I have to do this, I'll make extra just in case. Like I'll make extra white discs in case because we're all human. Nothing's perfect. Do the markers come in packs? Yes. So um, the markers come in packs of black, a like two packs. So there's a... a pointy tip and a bold and a fine tip. And then there's other packets of five. So then there's bold, a bold pack, a fine tip pack, an extra fine tip pack, and then a neon pack, which I believe is the fine tip as well. And those all have blue, red, yellow, green. Um, the extra fine I think has a brown and then the neon colors, those get fun. Those have purple, pink, and orange in them as well but all of those packs will have a black marker. So I'm just going to finish writing the messages. And then also you can always practice this on like parchment paper or something first before you actually do it onto your piece of fondant. Um, 
Um, we have another question. Okay. Melissa, can you make your own fondant or does it not mold as well? Um, you can definitely make your own fondant. There's recipes out there. Um, it's definitely just easier getting it ready to use, but you can definitely venture out and make it yourself. So I'm just writing this message. I'm writing, I love you. And if it doesn't even have to be perfect because no one's going to pay attention to that small detail. It's kind of just an extra little thing that looks nice. So like, even if it starts to go off the edge, I'm not even, fin if the sentence doesn't fit, I'm not finishing it. I'm just kind of making it as it's like a continuous message along the back. Okay, and then the next one, I'm going to just write love across the back. You could do hearts on these, you could do anything. I'm just being very careful because the fondant isn't completely set yet. So I'm going very light. But the edible markers make it so that you can really do any design that you want if you aren't confident doing um, extravagant designs with fondant or like royal icing on a cookie, you can just cover the cookie with a base of fondant or royal icing and then use the markers to make your design after they're set. So that's good too. Okay, so once you have your messages written on the white fondant, this is when we can place our little toppers on top. And to do that, we're going to use the edible glue. So I still have my edible glue on my surface over here on the mat. And this glue is really good. So you, you don't need a lot. And it sets pretty fast too, which is great. Like the glue that I already put onto my mat before to use is starting to set, which is a good thing. You want it to set. So I'm just putting a little bit on the bottom of my little heart and I'm gonna place it onto the fondant disc. Do the same thing with the others. You could choose whichever one that you want to put on each disc. Just lightly pat it down so that it's attached. And then the toppers are ready to go. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the buttercream. So the new satinized ready to use buttercream is really awesome because first of all, it tastes amazing. And I know it's hard to get ready to use buttercream out there that tastes good and that will hold a pipe. There's so many out there that either taste good and it's like you can't pipe a design with them or they hold a pipe and they don't taste good, but the satin ice buttercream tastes amazing. It has a nice vanilla buttercream flavor. Um, it is a pure white color, which is great because you can color it and you can even um, change the consistency if you want. If you wanna thin it down, you can do that by adding milk or water. Um, I know that if I was spreading this on a cake, I would definitely wanna thin it down just cause that's easier to spread around the sides. Um, if you wanted it a little bit thinner for piping, if it was too thick for you to pipe out of the bag, that again, you can just add a little bit of milk or water to make it the right consistency. And then you can use the satin ice food color gels to color it any tint that you want. Um, so I have the buttercream already in my piping bag here. Um, so you could do this either, either way. So if, if you didn't make the disc, um, and you put it directly on the cupcake, you can just spread the frosting on the cupcake just like we did before and we place the fondant directly on the cupcake. So you could do it that way. Or 
you can pipe the buttercream directly onto the cupcake and then place the disc on top. And the piping doesn't have to be anything intricate or anything like that because it's gonna be covered by that disc. So the fondant is like really the showstopper here. So to do this, I'm literally just gonna do a small little swirl of buttercream on top. Um, while you do that, Sarah, I have a couple questions for you. Okay. Jean asks, can you put these decorations on a cookie? Yes. So what you could do is, there's different ways you could do this for a cookie. You could, whatever shape your cookie is, you can cut the fondant to be the shape and the size of the cookie. Fondant is amazing on cookies. I love it because it's super easy. You're really, you're rolling out fondant and you're cutting out the shape rather than having to put royal icing in a piping bag and pipe. Um, but you can cover the cookie in whatever base you want, fondant, royal icing, cookie icing. Um, and then once it's, and then you can add these toppers. So like if you were doing royal icing though, you would wanna wait for your royal icing coating to dry completely before adding fondant pieces on top so that it doesn't sink in. Um, but yeah, you can definitely do this design on cookies. You can do this design on anything. It would be good on brownies, on Rice Krispie treats, on a whole cake. And then Rachel asks, can you put the fondant circles on a cupcake iced with cream cheese frosting or does it have to be buttercream? No, yeah, cream cheese frosting would be delicious. That's like my favorite buttercream. So yeah, that would definitely work. Um, any frosting underneath it for cupcakes, work great. It's really just so that, like, think of the, the, the fondant kind of as the frosting when you put it directly on, because it, it is, um, you, you just want to put a thin amount of frosting on so that the fondant has something to adhere to. And you, you want to do like a thin coating of fondant too. You don't want it to be a thick amount of fondant. Cause then that would just be a weird texture for people. Um, but yeah, any buttercream underneath would be fine. That's it for now, thank you. Okay, um, so I just put buttercream on the cupcake and now I'm going to just show you what it would be like to put the fondant disc on top. So like I said, if I were, uh, if I had time, I would want these to sit out overnight so that they would really set up and, um, because if I do it now, if I put it on here, later on it might start to kind of like take form of the cupcake and you can do that design with this. But with this, you're you're really wanting it to just kind of be like a disc that you sit on top as a topper. It's an edible topper rather than like a plastic one. Um, but yeah, does anyone else have any questions? These are really cute for Valentine, little Valentine gifts too. Um, we don't have any other questions. Okay. Thank you guys all for joining me. Um, my next class in March is for, um, it's an Easter theme. So definitely go sign up for that. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me. Have a great Valentine's Day and have a great rest of your week.